Dan, let's start with this. What is true about the caravan of migrants um, making their way through Mexico and what is not? There is a caravan. That is it. <laughs> so, it's like, there is a caravan of mostly women and children, people who are fleeing oppression. We have had many caravans like these in the past, many much larger than this. People who come to the United States to engage in the legal process of filing for asylum, which right. is a right that they have. And Trump would have you believe, I mean, it, like, we, it's worth taking a step back to know just how fucking gross this is. He stood on a stage at the White House saying that we are being invaded. He's making up a fake invasion and saying the people in this caravan have leprosy, smallpox, they are terrorists. And he, it's not that he suggested that the troops may shoot these people. He said he ordered, he told the troops, he is the commander in chief, he told them to consider a rock the same as a rifle. So if anyone threw a rock at a US troop, that they were then, they had the okay to kill them. And it is just such, like, we're so caught up in the absurdity of Trump and right. just that we don't take him seriously that you got to take a step back and realize what is happening. It is an unprecedented thing in American history that's happening right now. But also the permission structure that he gives to dictators and autocrats around the world. Because after he says this, what happens? Whether it's true or not, the Nigerian army did the same thing. They threw rocks, they were shot, and they, are, they put up a, a video of Trump saying consider rocks weapons. Yeah, this is why we shot these protesters, because Trump said it was okay right, to do Right, now, whether, like, obviously they shouldn't take that literally, but why not? Yeah. It's all the more offensive, too, in that, I mean, it's, it can't really get much more offensive, but it's, he's not, this isn't a, you know, he has a basic gut strategy of scapegoating people who look different, who are brown, who are from somewhere else, who are trans and what have you, but... He is just, it's just, jazz, it's just racist jazz to him, right? He's just going out there and like throwing things out there, trying things out. He's not, he's not thought deeply about fascism and how it can help him rise right. to power. But, he's not thought about these issues carefully. He's just riffing. Right. He's, riff, he's just a heinous but, riffer. Of course, it has, con riff. it, has, it has consequences, right? Because we now have a, a whole bunch, thousands of troops headed to the border. He said up to 15,000, the army's like, uh, we don't know about that. <laughs> Tommy, yeah. what do you think about that? I, I mean... He's talking about sending 15,000 troops to the border. So that'd be on top of all the local cops, be on top of a couple thousand National Guard. And then there's 16,000 Customs and Border Patrol officers on site. The average CBP officer in the last fiscal year arrested uh, or interdicted 23 individuals. So when you separate out that like half are women and children, they basically got one male by himself per month. So you're sending 15,000 people on top of that. It, it makes no sense. And then in, in contrast, we have less than 15,000 U.S. service members in Afghanistan, like 5,000 guys trying to hold together Iraq, 2,000 in Syria trying to fight off ISIS. So from a resource perspective, and, it's the dumbest thing in the world. And Tommy, also, they don't have any, they can't do anything other than logistical support at right. the border. So it's, right, what he's trying to announce is total bullshit. But in practice, I mean, these are men and women who have spent 17 years being deployed all over the world because of the global war on terror, and we're saying to them, Here's another Christmas, another Thanksgiving away from your family because you're a political prop for this right. president. It's right. so crazy. He's sending as many troops as we have around the world to fight the Taliban and ISIS yeah. to go to the border. And these people in the caravan are not trying to sneak across the border. Their plan is to show... They are, of course, hundreds of miles away right now. Yeah. But their plan is to show up at the border and turn themselves in. Right. In, and part, again, in part because it's actually gotten hard to get across the border another way. Well, I was yeah. going to say, uh, remember, we've had one of these caravans before. Last time it happened, by the time they got to the border, it was down to a few hundred people. Some of them sought asylum. Some were granted. Many, were, Most were denied. And that was it. It was fine. Nothing. There was no crisis. There was nothing. And once again, we know as soon as the election is over, we will never hear about this yeah. caravan again. And it really goes to something deeper about why this kind of racial animus is so destructive. Obviously, it's destructive in the first way in which it, you know, tries to turn a population hostile to the marginalized, to those who need help, whether they're people of color, whether they're gay or trans, whatever group you're trying to stigmatize. But there's also harm that happens to the rest of us. When, when you do a scapegoat, you're saying, uh, it's the goat's fault. <laughs> well, it's never the goat's fault. <laughs> never once, I mean, Leviticus, has some really good ideas. Huh. Uh, 
tell Let me the more. Let's scapegoat is Leviticus not one fan. of them. <laughs> yeah. You never stop talking about Leviticus. It's like. <laughs> I, look, some people like the New Testament, but I like the old stuff. Uh, I like the first album. Just playing the hit. No, no, but in addition to the, the way it engenders sort of racism and bigotry, because uh, it's leadership, it also means we're not actually solving problems. When we're talking about, the, we're talking about a caravan because they don't want to talk about pre-existing conditions. They don't want to talk about health care. They don't want to talk about their tax bill. But also beyond that, when you racialize an issue like this, when you try to make things about us versus them, your competence doesn't matter, your resource use doesn't matter, right? Joe Arpaio, right? He got elected again and again and again by using these same kind of tactics. Well, it turns out he was a really shitty fucking sheriff. And there is now people being shot out with fully automatic rifles that he misplaced because he didn't care about doing the job because it wasn't his, because he didn't have to worry about being good at his job as long as he can get enough people scared, enough people frightened to keep him in his position.